So the reason I'm kind of scared about this project is I've gotten a bit better at tinkering since I backburned this thing. And when I look at it now, all I see is just a big like, pile of bad decisions and just a mess. And I don't know for sure what, I don't even know what I did honestly with some of this stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> um, what I want to do now is kind of show off some of the redeeming features of it because there's actually some good stuff in there that make it worth saving. Um, I'll show some of the issues and I want to kind of sum this up kind of quickly. Hopefully I, in the next video or the one after that, I can have it just done and looking good, finally be good. But I don't know. I don't know if it'll work. I, there's a, I'm unsure <laughs> what, what's going to happen here. Uh, so some of the good things, we have a very good screen. It's a, the Hyperpixel um, 800 by 480 resolution screen. It's really good. When, when I started this project, I wanted to do the same thing that everybody else does. They always say I want to, or we always say, I want to keep it as much of a Game Boy DMG look as I can. And that's why I put the shoulder buttons down here. These are 3D printed with the stop tack switches underneath. Um, and it's, it's, it's okay, it's not ideal. I don't think any shoulder buttons on Game Boy DMG have been really ideal. Uh, these are my favorite, apart from there's one other build that I saw where somebody actually put them in the... Um, this little textured section here on the side. So they blend right in. That's the best one that I, that I like. Uh, I couldn't find it again, so whoever you are, you are awesome. This is my second favorite. So another thing, we have the USB in to the Pi. We have the volume potentiometer. The sound, the audio is gonna be out of this screw hole here. It's a little bit quiet, but it's, it's usable. The HDMI out, the actual HDMI out that's on the Pi board the power in, and the power bank out. This has an advertised 10,000 milliamp hour battery. Most of the internals here is battery. And um, I think they jipped me though, I think it's actually 8,000. Um, either way, it's still pretty big. So, oh, and the cooling also, I have the air intake through the front speaker grill. It goes through, there's actually two heat sinks, one on the bottom and one on the top of the pie, sandwiched together, and there's a channel here that goes out through the rear screw hole with a couple heat sinks in the channel also. So this fan at 3.3 volts keeps everything nice and cool and uh, you can barely, you can't really hear it. It's just, and you can't even feel it. If your hand is wet, you can kind of feel the air kind of seeping out of the back. So it just is perfect. Um, at least that part is perfect. <laughs> so I had different intentions here. I didn't want to put these indicator lights here but um, that whole area, I had something else really cool planned and it didn't work out. I have this really dirty screen protector on here. So you probably can't tell, but the screen resolution, I mean, it's really crisp. And this screen, it uses um, all 40 uh, GPIO pins on the, on the Pi 3. So I've actually wired that up to, to span this gap here so I can keep the HDMI port. And um, it took too much power from the Pi also, so I had to use two, the, the two five volt um, inputs to the screen from the, the power directly there. So, oh man, there's gonna be quite a bit to do with this. One of the biggest issues that's gonna be the biggest annoying thing for me is the Teensy controller. I had a lot of trouble with that. It still doesn't work 100% perfectly. Multiple button presses don't, don't respond the right way. Um, and there's a little bit of lag sometimes. So I had to take that out, rewire, and reprogram the whole thing. I'm not a programmer, so I had a lot of trouble with that. None of the default uh, sketches would work, for me anyway. So, we'll see. In uh, like a one or two more videos, I'll be smiling or I'll be crying. I don't know. <laughs>